Okay, so let's uh, first of all finish up section 5.2 and then we will uh, uh, discuss the final. Uh, so let's recall very quickly uh, what we have seen last time. Uh, we were looking at so, uh, solids of revolution and in the graph that I have uh, the pink, uh, well the magenta curve, that's the graph of the function f and if you look at the region below the graph of f above the interval from a to b all right, and if you revolve that region around the x-axis you get a solid and that's the solid that I have in my uh, picture. Now remember what I said is that uh, the, the, the solid basically consists of what? The solid consists of the cross section. So what is a cross section? Uh, given any x between a and b, uh, if I cut the solid with a plane perpendicular to the x-axis, then I get a cross section, and the cross section is a disk. Uh, in this case, right? If I, if I, so what is the cross section at x? Well, given an x value, right? If you, uh, what is the height of the graph at x? What is the height of the graph at x? The height of the graph at x is the value of the function of x. Now, in order to obtain the cross section at x, uh, what do you do? Well, look at the red line segment. If I revolve the red line segment around the x-axis, I get this, and that's the cross section. Uh, if I cut the solid at x with the perpendicular perpendicular plane, I get that I get that uh, uh, disk. And what's the radius of the disk? Well, the disk is obtained by revolving this line segment. So, whatever the length of this line segment is, that's the radius. Well, that is exactly f of x. So f of x is the radius of the cross section. Right? So everybody is 100% uh, clear. <coughs> the radius of the cross section at x is f of x. Right? So once I know that, basically, in order to find the volume, all I have to do is integrate from a to b the area of the cross section at x. So my integrand is the area of the cross section at x area of the cross section at x. So x is varying, so think of x is varying from a to b, right? x is varying from a to b, and when you're taking the integral of the, uh, of the area of the cross sections, you basically you're summing up the areas of all the cross sections, and you're getting the volume. Okay. So in order to find the volume, you integrate the area of the cross section at x, where x goes from a to b. Right? Uh, we saw an example last time, and I won't go over the same example again, but I want to look at a different type of solid. Not a different type, but it's still, but instead of, instead of uh, revolving around the x-axis, what if we revolve around the y-axis? So now, the situation is the following. Uh, I have the interval from c to d, and over the interval from C to D, I have this uh, uh, magenta curve. That magenta curve is the graph of the function x equals to g of y. So I am viewing this, I am viewing this curve uh, as the graph of a function. Uh, I'm viewing x as a function of y. Am I making sense? So the magenta curve is the graph of g of y and x is represented as a function of y by this magenta curve. Now, I am revolving this around the y-axis, right? No, not revolving the curve. If I only revolve, revolve the curve, I get the surface of the solid. But what I am revolving is I am revolving the uh, region between y-axis and the magenta curve, right? I'm revolving the region between y-axis and the magenta curve uh, around the y-axis, and if I do that, I get a uh, solid, and again, the question is, what's the volume of that solid? The answer is the same. The answer is, well, uh, pick any y between c and d. So pick an arbitrary y value between c and d, 
and look at what's the cross section at y. What is the area of the cross section at y? Well, if you think about it, if I pick at a specific y, right? Specific y, then look at the line segment, the red line segment. So this, the red line segment uh, uh, is between the point at y on the ex y axis and the, and the corresponding point on the graph of the function g of y. So if I look at this red line segment joining the corresponding point on the graph, which is what? Uh, if I look at this uh, magenta point on the curve corresponding to y, what's the y coordinate of this point? The y coordinate of the magenta point corresponding to y is exactly y, right? Because the height is y. So what's the first coordinate? The first coordinate is x, right? x is g of y. So the first coordinate would be g of y. So what's the length of this uh, red line segment? G of y, right? So in order to obtain the cross section at y, what are you doing? Well, you are revolving the red line segment around the y-axis, right? That's how, that's how you're getting the cross section at y, and that's the disk, and the radius is g of y, right? right? So what do you do? Well, you integrate the area of the cross section at y from c to d. So y varies from c to d. Anybody agree with that? Very much the same as the first case, except that you are revolving around the uh, y-axis. Is everybody clear on this? You had the main main problem is coming up with the area of the cross section. Okay, once you know the area of the cross section is pi times g of y squared. What's the radius of the cross section? That's the main point. And um, let's look at an example uh, of, uh, of using this. Uh, is everybody done writing down the picture? Okay. Let's find the volume of the solid obtained by uh, rotating about the y-axis uh, the region bounded by the graph of x cubed and uh, and uh, y equals to 8 and x equals to 0. So we are, we are talking about the region bounded by three curves. Right? One curve is the graph of x cubed, one curve is the horizontal line at 8, one curve is the, heart, is the vertical line at x equals to 0. The vertical line at x equals to 0 is the y axis. So uh, what region am I uh, talking about? The region I am talking about is exactly this region, isn't it? It is bounded by the graph of x cubed, bounded above by the horizontal line at 8, right? And bounded, bounded, by, bounded by the y-axis, right? Bounded by the y-axis. That's the region we are talking about. Of course, the, the parabola has a, I mean, not the parabola, the, the graph of x cubed has another part like this. Uh, the line extends like this, but the region bounded by all three curves is this one. What are we doing? Well, we are revolving it around the y-axis. We are revolving it around the y-axis. Uh, is everybody uh, okay with that? We are revolving that around the uh, y-axis. And can I erase this? Well, it's not letting me erase it. Well, if you have seen it, that's okay, but I'm going to assume you didn't see it. Okay, so now, uh, how do I come up with the volume? So what do I have? Uh, uh, first of all, uh, can someone tell me uh, what is this curve, uh, blue curve? That blue curve is the graph of x cubed, right? It's the graph of x cubed. Uh, but I could also say this is the graph of x equals to what? y to the one third. So this is my g of y. This is my g of y. This is the I, I am viewing x as a function of y. So x is y to the one third. 
And uh, so now I, I, I'm revolving it. I want to know what's the cross set, what's the area of the cross section at y. So I'm picking an arbitrary y between zero and eight. Okay, and and then what I'm doing is I am looking at uh, the line segment uh, joining the point at uh, uh, joining the point at y on the y-axis to the corresponding point on the graph of the function. Uh, x cubed. Uh, can someone tell me what are the coordinates of the red point? What are the coordinates? Well, I am looking at the point at height y, right? Well, the second coordinate is what? Y, because the height I'm looking at is at y. Well, if the second coordinate is y, then what's the first coordinate? The first coordinate would be g of y, right? Because x is because the point lies on the graph of x equals to y to the one third. So the se the fir first coordinate would be y to the one third. Okay. So what is the length of the red line segment? The length of the red line segment is y to the one third, right? The length of the red line segment is the x coordinate of that point. The x coordinate of the red point is the red line segment. And um, now, would you agree that the uh, the cross section at y, the radius is exactly y to the one third, right? So then, what is the area? What is the uh, area of the uh, 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 cross section at y? The area of the cross section at y would be pi times y to the one third squared, and then I'm going to integrate. Uh, y goes from zero to eight. Y goes from zero to eight, and then dy, and that's exactly the volume of this solid. Okay. If you understand how to come up with the area of the cross section, uh, then the problem becomes easy for you to write down the integral. Once you write down the integral, uh, the computation really should usually is easy. Okay, that's the easy easy part. So I want to focus on coming up with the integral. Okay, that's the volume. Any questions on what we did? Now there are some other variations of uh, this type of solids, and I want to look at some other variations now. But I'm, I'm not going to say general general things. I'm just going to give you examples to explain what are the other possibilities. So let's look at this specific example here. Uh, in this example, I want to find the volume of the solid uh, by rotating the region bounded by the line y equals to x and the parabola y equals to x squared. I want to rotate the region bounded by the two curves and I'm going to rotate it uh, rotate it uh, around a couple of different axes. So first of all in part A I'm going to uh, revolve it around the x-axis. In part B I'll revolve it around the y-axis and in part C, I'm going to revolve it around uh, another axis, which is the horizontal line at 2. Okay, so let's see what's going on. Okay, so you, would you agree that uh, the graph of uh, uh, the parabola y equals to x squared is exactly the green curve, right? The green curve is x squared. And the black straight line, that's the y equals to x line. And when x is between 0 and 1, which curve is below? When x is between 0 and 1, which curve is below? x squared is below the line. Because think about squaring 0.5, right? If you square 0.5, you get 0.25. So uh, the green curve is below the, uh, below the straight line between 0 and 1. So let's focus on uh, the interval from uh, 0 to 1 because the, I mean it's clear the intersection of the two curves is at 0 and at the point 1 1 right 
So the region bounded by both curves is what? The region bounded by both curves is basically then, then this region up here, right? You agree with that? Okay. So uh, that's the region that we have. And uh, so now we want to know, uh, let's answer part B first. Okay. So I'm going to answer part B. So in part B, what are we doing? Let me go up a little bit more. Yes. So let's look at part B now. Part B. In part B, what are we doing? We have the region bounded by the two curves, and we are going to revolve it around the y-axis, right? Now, if I revolve it around the y-axis, I'm not, I'm not going to draw the solid, because then I have to draw three different solids. I don't want to do it. Uh, but without drawing the solid, I can come up with the cross-sectional areas. I'll, see, I'll show you what, how. But what are we doing? We are revolving the region right around the y-axis. And if I do that, you realize that I'm going to get a solid, but there is a, there is a hole in the solid. Uh, let me maybe draw it here. If I draw it, so basically what you're going to get is... Uh, uh, you're gonna get a solid where there is a cone which is uh, which is uh, like uh, uh, empty, right? Solid is right here. Right? In between the cone, so think about you have a you have a paraboloid and you have a, like a cone shape. Whatever the solid is in between the two. If you think about the solid you obtain by revolving only the line. If you revolve only the line, you get a solid. And if you revolve the green curve, you get a solid. And uh, when you revolve the region bounded by the two, you get the solid in between. You realize that? Is everybody okay with that? Okay, now let's think about this. How do I come up with the volume? when I do that. Well again, the idea is the same. You know, in order to find the volume, you integrate the area of the cross section at, at a arbitrary y. So let's pick, uh, so for this region, the y value varies from where to where? The y value varies from 0 to 1, right? Because the region, the region is bounded by the two curves and their intersections are at 0 and 1, right? So x, uh, y varies from 0 to 1. Everybody is okay with that? So let's pick a, let's pick a uh, y value and between 0 and 1. And I want to know what's the cross-section of the solid at y. Now would you agree that, uh, how, so how, how, how is the cross-section at y generated? How is the cross-section at y generated. Well, if you think about it, right at y, if I make a horizontal line, the horizontal line will intersect the region at a line segment, and the blue line, blue line segment that I have, that's the line segment. Now, would you agree that the uh, cross section at y is being generated when I revolve the blue segment around the y-axis? When I revolve the blue uh, segment around the y-axis, I get the cross section at y. How does it look like? It looks like a washer. The, 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 the cross section. The cross section looks like a washer. Right? You agree with that? So when I revolve the blue segment around the y-axis, I basically get a washer. And can someone tell me what's the area of the washer? Well. There is an outer radius, there is an inner radius, right? So basically, I look at the outer disk. The area of the outer disk would be pi times the radius squared minus the area of the inner disk, which would be pi times the radius of that disk squared, right? So we know how exactly how to find the area of a washer like this, right? Is everybody okay? All right. Uh, my question to you then is, exact, in this case, what's the area? Well, if I want to come up with this, 
I have to tell you what is the outer radius and what is the inner radius. In order to come up with this, let's uh, view the following. Um, if I look at, uh, would you agree that the inner radius is basically the, the uh, red line segment up to the red point? Up to the red point, right? And uh, what is that length? Can you tell me what is that length? <coughs> well, that length would be the x coordinate of the red point, right? What are the uh, x coordinate of the red points? The x coordinate of the red point is what? Again, the red point has second coordinate y because we are looking at height y. What would be the first coordinate? Well, the red point is on the line y equals to x. On that line, first and second coordinates are what? Same. So the first coordinate would be y as well. We are given the second coordinate y, so the first coordinate would be y as well. So then the length from the y-axis to this point is what? y. So that's my inner radius. How about the outer radius? Well, I have to look at the distance of the blue point distance of the blue point from the y-axis that's my outer radius and that's the va that, that value is what? Well again the second coordinate of the blue point is y because we are looking at height y and then the first coordinate would be what? Well the blue point is on the parabola, right? Uh, on the parabola what is x value? x is the root of y, right? So then this would be root of y. Right? Given that I know the second coordinate is y, then the first coordinate would be the square root of the second coordinate. So then I know that the blue distance, the, the outer radius would be uh, root of y. Well then, what's the area of the, of the cross section at y? The area of the cross section at y would be pi times the uh, outer radius, which is what? Root of y squared minus pi times y, uh, pi times y squared, because y is the inner radius. And then I have to uh, integrate that from 0 to 1 with respect to y. And, and and that gives me and that gives me the uh, the volume when I when I revolve around the y-axis. You guys agree with that? Okay, stare at stare at what we just did, and and, and let me know if you if you got. Everybody is okay. Okay, let me know if you're done writing it down because I'm going to erase everything and I'm going to do part A because I don't want to make a new picture uh, again, okay? So I'll erase my work. <coughs> Alright, so let me erase uh, everything that I have and then I'm going to do part A. Um, not needed. Okay, um, so now uh, I want to look at part A. In part A, what are we doing? In part A, we are now revolving around the x-axis, right? In part A, we are uh, revolving around the uh, uh, x-axis, right? And if we are revolving around the x-axis, then what would be the volume? We have the same region, but we are revolving around the x-axis now. 
Well, what should I do? Again, I have to come up with the cross, the area of the cross section at any given value of x uh, uh, here. So here, the region extends from 0 to 1. x goes from 0 to 1. So I pick any x between 0 and 1. Okay. And this time, what I'm going to do is, in order to understand what is the cross section at x, I am going to look at a vertical line at x, and that vertical line will intersect, will intersect the region at a vertical line segment like this. And you would agree with me, I hope, that uh, the uh, cross section at x is obtained by revolving the blue line segment around the x-axis. And again, if you revolve the blue line segment around the x-axis, you get a washer and we know how to find the area of that. And again, what do I need? Well, what would be the inner radius in this case? Uh, in this case, the inner radius would be the magenta line segment. And this, would be, this length here would be, would be the inner radius. And what would be the outer radius? The outer radius uh, would be the length from here all the way up here. Right, that's the outer radius. Uh, in order to come up with them, what do I need? I need to know the second coordinate of the red point again. The second coordinate of the red point will t tell me the height uh, or, uh, of the... Uh, what, or, uh, it will tell me the outer radius. And uh, the magenta point here, if I know the second coordinate, that's going to tell me uh, the inner radius. So can someone tell me what's the second coordinate? Oh, well, what's the first coordinate of the red point? Yeah, because we are looking at, at x. We fixed the first coordinate at x. And then the second coordinate, because it's on the line y equals to x, it, the second coordinate would be x. So my outer radius is x. What is my inner radius? Uh, the inner radius, this, this point, the magenta point, lies on the parabola, right? So if the first coordinate is, uh, if the first, let me maybe write it here. If the first coordinate is x, the second coordinate would be what? x squared. Is everybody okay? And so, uh, what is the, uh, uh, what is the uh, area of the cross section? Well, pi times the outer radius is x squared minus pi times the inner radius is x squared. So I have to square that. And then I have to integrate from 0 to 1. So x is going from 0 to 1 uh, dx. And that's the volume. Uh, everybody is OK? You guys are OK with that? All right. So that's uh, part A, and we have just one more part left, where you're going to revolve around uh, the line y equals to uh, 2. Okay. Everybody is uh, OK with that. So let me give you a few seconds to uh, write everything down. Everybody's okay? If you know how to do this problem in the final, it's an easy problem. If you know how to look, come up with the area of the cross section, right? Because all you have to do is set up the integral. If you know what to do, you'll be done in a minute. But if you don't know, well, if you don't know, you're just going to miss the problem, basically. If you don't know how to find the, the area of the cross section, uh, then then you'll just miss, miss the problem. Is everybody okay? All right, so let me then uh, move on to uh, uh, part C. Let me raise all I have here. We are not revolving around the x-axis anymore.
Okay. Um, so we still have the same same curve, same region, but now we will be uh, revolving. We will be revo revolving around another axis. <coughs> And unfortunately, my, the axis that I want uh, for that axis, I have to erase my question. Otherwise, I can't draw it. So let me erase my question. I think you have the question already. So now we are we're going to revolve the same region around uh, the line y equals to 2. And I also need to extend my y-axis a little bit. Whoops. <coughs> what happened? I thought I erased all that. What's going on? It went away by itself, so... <laughs> uh, my... my uh, You know what, I'm just going to close it, open it again. <laughs> okay, what, what, what I wanted to do is basically extend my y-axis uh, so that I can draw what's going on. Okay, so I, maybe maybe I'm not going to. Uh, I'm just going to say one, two, three, four. Um, so y equals to two line. That's this horizontal line, right? Let me not bother with the y-axis at all. So that's the uh, that's the line y equals to two. So what are we going to do now? We are going to revolve the region that I have uh, around the line y equals to 2. Right? Important thing to note here is that the line y equals to 2 is parallel to which axis? x-axis. So you're, you're going to do similar things that you did with when you revolve around the x-axis. When you revolve around the x-axis, you integrate with respect to what? When you revolve around the x-axis, you integrate with respect to x, right? When you, re when you re in, in, in the other problems that you have seen, when you revolve around the y-axis, you integrate it with respect to y. Now you are, you are revolving around a axis which is, which is parallel to the x-axis. So you're, you're going to integrate with respect to x. If I was revolving around a line which is parallel to the y-axis, I would be integrating with respect to y. Okay, that's important to know. So now let's think about what are what is the cross what are the cross sections again? So I'm going to I'm going so I am revolving the region around the y equals to 2, right? So how are you generating the how are you generating the uh, cross section at x? Pick an x in between 0 and 1 again and you look at the uh, uh, the you look at a vertical line at x, that's going to intersect the region at a vertical line segment, that's the blue line segment. And how am I generating the cross section at x? Well, I am going to revolve the blue line segment around the line y equals to 2. If I do that, 
can somebody please tell me what would be the outer radius? I'm still going to get a what? A washer. What's the inner radius and what is the outer radius? That's what I want to know. So you would agree with me that the outer radius would be this, right? The bigger radius would be this. And what would be the smaller radius? So basically I need to know two things. One is, what's the distance from here to here? That's the inner radius when I revolve that segment, right? And I also have to know what's the distance from here all the way up to here, right? You agree? Well, okay, what's the smaller radius? What is the smaller radius? What is the smaller radius? And what's the bigger, what is the bigger radius? Let me call this R1. Let me call this R1 and let me call this R2. R1 is what? No. So uh, R1 is uh, R1 is basically the height two minus what? The height two minus the height of the line, right? The height two minus the height of the line at x, which is x. So it's two minus x. What is R2? R2 is the uh, R2 is two minus the height of the parabola at x, right? The height of the parabola at x is x squared. So this would be what? 2 minus x squared. Everybody is okay with that? Okay, so the rest is clear then. I, I, uh, what, is the, uh, what is the outer radius? Outer radius is, uh, uh, what was that? Outer radius, uh, 2 minus x squared. You square that. And the inner radius is 2 minus x. You square that and you subtract, that's the area of the cross section at x, you integrate x from 0 to 1. Uh, is everybody uh, okay with, with that? You guys are okay with that? Alright, so that's what you get. Now, if you want to make sure that you understand this problem, well, one thing you could do is uh, do this problem. Uh, revolve the same region uh, around the line x equals to negative 1. x equals to negative 1. That's a vertical line. Revolve it around that and see if you can come up with the volume. If you can, that means you are, you are good to go. But if you can't, you should think about it more. Okay? Okay, I'm done with uh, 5.2 and uh, that's the end of, uh, of the course, okay?